What's going on everybody? Today we're taking a look at a Spyderco knife, something we haven't looked at here on the channel for a little while now, or at least done a full review on. And this one specifically, the Salt 2. Stay tuned. So I myself am a huge Spyderco fan. I really do like their products, especially for like an EDC style of blade. Uh, I'm more apt to go somewhere else for a fighting fixed blade or a, a fighting folder uh, most of the time, although it's a blade and it will cut, it will kill, as Doug Markaida would say. And uh, I've always been interested in the Spider Co. designs and the different stuff they had going on, especially the Salt series. The Salt series, as implied, or as you would think would be implied, is it's salt water proof or at least resistant. So if you're fishing a lot, you're diving a lot, you're on the beach a lot, whatever, um, it's not going to rust out on you, and that's super cool, and that, that was something, you know, all these weird different steels, it was always something that caught my attention, and uh, I finally, after all that time, picked one up. So here's another look at the skew real quick, in case you want to run out and pick yourself one of these up. Uh, anytime in the near future. There's all the, the product information. This one specifically is made in Japan, Seki City, Japan, not Golden, Colorado, USA, Earth. Uh, and there's all the uh, the deets on it. It's the Salt 2 in green, and it's the serrated version. And you see 90 bucks. That's what I paid for it. But on Spyderco's website, uh, it has an MSRP of $177.50. That being said, you can regularly find them uh, for around 100 25 bucks or give or take you know a little bit a little more a little less a little more and uh, I think for the steel that you're getting for the capabilities of the knife and uh, just overall the build quality spider co has yet to let me down in any of that so here's the box standard stuff you get your cool little spider co sticker uh, the manual or whatever little advertisement propaganda and you do get the knife wrapped in bubble wrap which I have thrown out because ever since I bought this thing, it's been in my pocket. And it fell out of my pocket, and we'll get to that story in a second. But uh, give you a look at the knife here. Beautiful. I love that green. That green is absolutely gorgeous. I'm a huge fan of like zombie green, toxic, toxic green, all that stuff. And uh, when I saw this, whether it was a salt or not, I knew I was buying it. But the fact that it is a salt uh, is cool because even if you're not swimming in the ocean or fishing a bunch or whatever, if you're sweating on it all day, carrying it every single day, which if you're a grown man and you're not carrying a pocket knife every single day of your life, what are you doing with yourself? Uh, you just, it, it takes it out of the equation. You don't really have to worry about it rusting on you. You don't have to worry about maintenance as much. But that being said, you know, this is a tool. Take care of the tools that take care of you and you'll be better off. So here's a look at the blade. I did go with the fully serrated, or they call it the spider edge, where it's mostly, it's about three quarters of the way, a little bit more serrated. Uh, beautiful, beautiful teeth on that, extremely sharp, and then you still do have a little bit of a plain edge towards the tip. If you're doing some type of fine work or whatever it is, you got the spidey hole, of course. Um, just a good looking knife. Love, love the FRN handles. Those are fiberglass reinforced nylon scales. They're lightweight. The bi-directional texturing on the scales themselves really locks the knife into your hand. And another thing that I've always really, really liked with Spyderco is their jimping. Uh, when you are using this knife for any serious purpose, it does bite and lock into your hand and inspires confidence in your grip. So let's talk some specs on this blade. Uh, first of all, you have an overall length of 7.2 inches. The closed length on the blade in your pocket, 4.25 inches. The blade thickness, 0 0.098 inches. So uh, not necessarily a Medford Pr Praetorian by any means. Um, but lightweight and for an EDC blade, something you're going to be using for EDC tasks or in this case specifically, if you're, you know, cutting fishing line all day or maybe gutting a fish or God forbid you got to stab a shark in the eyeball with it. Um, it, it's going to do what it needs to do. It's got a nice point on there, even though it's kind of a sheep's foot, uh, which could be a benefit in a rescue scenario where you have to derobe somebody. Also, the fact that it's a serrated blade, it will cut through cloth and fabric and rope and strap and seat belts and all that kind of stuff far better than a plain edge. And uh, that's why I like it because it's an emergency, dual purpose kind of thing. And two, if you had to cut a bad guy with this, 
probably going to be pretty permanent. Anyway, back to the specs. Um, a, the, the blade length, okay? Blade length. We have three inches. Three inches, but you don't get the full three inches of actual blade. You see the little choil there. Um, well, not necessarily a choil, I, I suppose, but um, it is a full flat ground blade, which is nice. The actual edge, the actual cutting edge length that you receive on this knife is 2.65 inches, so a little bit shy of that overall three inch length. Um, but to be expected, that's kind of just how it goes and no big deal. This is still more than enough to do everything that I would ever expect this knife to do and then even more than that you know again you could push this into an emergency sense um, uh, of preparedness you know type of knife like you this is a rescue knife it's it's a whatever again strap cutting rope cutting clothing cutting you could push it into a self-defense roll. Now, of course, a fixed blade is always better than a folder by all means, but the back locks on these Spydercos are pretty sturdy. There is no blade play. Um, centering, not exactly perfect, but it's pretty close. Maybe it is. I don't know. It looks like it's favoring this side a little bit more, um, but that could just be because of the shape of the tip at the end, at the end there. Um, but I don't know. Either way, I'm not I'm not worried about centering on a Spyderco Delica. Basically, this is just a fancy one, and that's the thing. If you're familiar with the Spyderco Delica, which is probably one of the most ubiquitous Spyderco knives ever, um, it's basically the same thing with a cooler blade, and uh, it's salt waterproof or salt water resistant, and really cool scales colors. Um, but yeah, the weight on it. Speaking of it being just about the same as a Delica, almost identical, minus, you know, the feature set or whatever, as far as the blade and the steel is concerned. Uh, 1.9 ounces, so this thing disappears in the pocket. It's super light, and for the, the weight of this knife and how light it actually is, I find it to be extremely, extremely capable. And of course, the pocket clip, traditional Spyderco pocket clip, um, three screw design and four way positionable. So you can run a tip up or tip down left or right handed and that's nice because it's built into the knife. You don't have to worry about it and regardless of how you choose to carry your blade, uh, they have facilitated those options for you. So I like it. You also have your little lanyard hole, of course, if you want to run paracord or whatever, you know, little carry beads or, or whatever EDC junkie knife nerd stuff you guys get into um but yeah i'm loving this thing I, i've always loved the spider co knives i think they're an excellent value i think they perform quite well and uh they they're just cool they're cool looking and i find them to be pretty ergonomic especially for an edc blade i tend to like a little bit of a bigger knife myself having bigger hands but for something nice and tiny and light in the pocket and still has a lot of capability to accomplish any daily task and then some i'm really not mad at it whatsoever so let's take a closer look at the blade, and I don't know how well the camera's going to pick it up, but if you look in all the little crevices in the bi-directional pattern, um, you perhaps might see some sand and some grit and some grime and some mud and some dirt, and that's because uh, not that long ago I was up on the prop and uh, we were cruising the ATVs all around and going up and down sand dunes and off little jumps and all types of stuff, and uh, I actually lost this out of my pocket. It had come out of my pocket and uh, I didn't even realize it because it is such a lightweight knife and it's relatively small, especially in comparison to the knives that I typically carry uh, as folders. And so I didn't, and plus we're riding around, cruising around on the ATVs, having tons of fun. And so wasn't even thinking about it, but uh, yeah, definitely, definitely lost this thing. Uh, cruising around some ATVs and uh, it got buried in the sand and probably ran over a couple times and uh, it's held up just fine. You know, there's a couple little scratchy poos or whatever on the seemingly parkerized or blackened black oxide darkened clip. It's a matte black finish on the clip, which I like. I think that goes really, really well with the toxic green scales. Um, but it's cool and thankfully to those toxic green scales, uh, it was easily found in the woods, in in the dunes, in the sand, because it sticks out. Even though green, and even you know some cases a green in this shade, um, 
it is apparent in nature. Uh, it still is, you know, laying on the floor. It stands out. It's bright. Same thing with the yellow ones. They've got orange handle, uh, is, you know, scales and stuff as well. Just the, the vibrant neon style colors. If you do drop your knife, um, it'd be a little bit easier to find. So I really, really like that. And uh, plus, I just really like the color. It's super cool. So that definitely came in handy. Not only is it functional artwork, you know, it's 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 a high vis option for hey, give me my knife. It's right there. It's easily identifiable. Oh, hey, I just dropped my knife. I lost it on this hike. Um, let's let's hike back see if I can find it. Maybe you will because it stands out. And uh, I do like that feature of it, multi-purpose thing going on there. Um, but yeah, just super cool knives, super cool knives. You could probably actually, if I shut up, I don't know. I don't know how well the camera's picking that up, but I can hear it with my my ears. Um, the sand. The sand crunching and crinkling in there. So all I did, it was a little bit stiffer. Um, because there is definitely some sand in there. I'm not gonna take it apart and clean it out. It's a tool, it'll be fine. It still functions perfectly. Um, I squirted a little CLP on each side, worked it in a little bit. I can still spidey flick it, so it's not a problem. Um, you can do the little spidey drop thing with it, not a problem. Um, and then traditionally, you're just gonna open it up manually like that, do what you gotta do, put it away, no big deal. So um, the only thing, the only gripe I could say after having this knife for, I think it's been a little bit over a month and carrying it every single day since, and uh, using and abusing it, is this pocket clip, it's got good tension on it, but I remember some of the other Spydercos having maybe a little bit better tension. I could be wrong, but this is the first and only Spyderco knife that has ever come out of my pocket. I've been carrying Spydercos for years and years and years. So, uh, I don't know. The clip seems legit. It seems like it's got some good tension, but clearly it came out. Now we were, like I said, cruising ATVs and going off jumps and up and down dunes and all that stuff. So, I mean, it's not like I'm just walking around the mall with it in my pocket and it fell out. So, I'll give it a pass, but... Um, something to keep an eye on. To me, at least, the, the clip doesn't seem as sturdy, perhaps, as maybe other models or older models, uh, and that would be the only gripe that I have with the knife. But overall, I'm absolutely loving it. I think it's sick, and I'm going to keep carrying it because it's holding up. Not a speck of rust. It's been wet. I've been sweating on it. You know, I've dropped it in the mud and the sand and the this, that, and the third, and it holds up, and it cuts great. And speaking of that, we cannot have a knife review without a cut test. Whew! Sharp, very, very sharp, sharp. And th this is serrated edges, right? So just very sharp. And I've been using it, like I use my stuff. I've been using this every single day to cut cardboard and tape and strings off the shirt. Haven't had that chance to cut a bad guy with it yet and hopefully I don't get that chance. But if I ever do, I'll let you guys know how that goes. And uh, with being as sharp as it is and with those nice jagged teeth, probably uh, fare quite well. So either way, that's the video, guys. Leave it in the, well, I leave it in the description box below. You leave it in the comment section below what you guys think. If you have one, if you like it, if you're interested in this stuff. And uh, make sure you check out those first three links in the description box below. Those are the most important. Those are to help you fight for your God-given inalienable, constitutionally protected and reaffirmed, but inherent by birth gun rights, people. And uh, those are forever important and always constantly under attack. So all of us need to do our part to fight against that. So, and I mean, that's the thing. You, you think this is safe. Oh, I'm a knife guy, really. I don't care about gun rights. Well, this is still an arm, an armament. And, uh, you know, Britain has serialized butter knives, people. And to think that that won't happen here if everybody is just so lackadaisical about everything, you are out of your minds. So join the fight, people, please. First three links are an excellent way for you to get started doing that. And of course, do your own thing, write, call, civilly disobey, do whatever it takes um, to keep freedom everlasting here in this country because that's how it was built and founded and supposed to be we've gotten really really far away from that in these days and it's scary people but anyway let me know what you guys think let me know what you think about this salt too and and if it's something that you might need or if you actually are out there diving with one or fishing with one all the time and how it's held up for you 
check out all the links pinned in the comment section in the description box and all that stuff if you're interested in some cool stuff and supporting the channel definitely definitely helps and is always appreciated never once expected but make sure you like share comment subscribe because that's always helpful in fighting the uphill battle of the anti-gun youtube algorithm and uh until next time don't you guys ever forget